In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about an object that is being launched at an angle above the horizontal and moving in two dimensions. And we're going to think about what happens in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction using the kinematic equations that we've learned already in order to study this object's projectile motion. And so here we're going to start with um, as I have shown in the, the plot above, an object that is being launched from the origin at an angle theta above the horizontal with an initial velocity v naught at a time t equals zero. And so what I'd like to do is think about the time, position, velocity, and acceleration of the object at um, this initial time t equals zero. So for starters, I know that in the horizontal direction at a time t equals zero, I know that the position is equal to zero, and when I think about the velocity, I know that the velocity in the horizontal direction is going to be some component of the total velocity that I've shown in the picture up above. Right? The total velocity is that arrow that I've drawn in yellow, but the velocity in the horizontal direction would be just this component that points along the x direction. And then of course there would be another component to this projectile's velocity that would point up like this. That would be the velocity in the vertical direction. And so what we would like to find is v naught x. And of course we know that um, that side of the triangle that I've drawn there, which is a right triangle, is related to the hypotenuse and the angle theta that I've drawn uh, such that v naught x, the horizontal component of the projectile's velocity, would be equal to v naught cosine theta. And so the initial velocity in the horizontal direction, v naught x, is equal to v naught cosine theta. Right? And another way of saying that is cosine theta is equal to v naught x divided by v naught where v naught x is the adjacent side of the triangle and v naught is the hypotenuse of the triangle. So adjacent over hypotenuse. And lastly, I'd like to think about the acceleration. When we consider an object that is moving through space, we know that there is one acceleration that uh, it typically experiences, and that is a downward acceleration, an acceleration that points that points toward the surface of the Earth, and that acceleration is equal to g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And so projectiles that are moving freely, uh, whether they're launched from a cannon or kicked or hit with something into the air, the moment they're given that initial velocity and they're moving on their own through the air, they only experience an acceleration in the vertical direction, that downward negative acceleration. In the x direction, they don't experience an acceleration if you're ignoring air resistance. So if we ignore those resistive forces that an object might experience as it moves through the air, then the only acceleration it experiences would be in the vertical direction. And so for now, that's, that's what we're going to consider to be true. And we'll just say that the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero. Okay. And so now let's, let's go ahead and shift over to the vertical direction and see what's happening at, at time t equals zero. At time t equals zero, the object is also starting at y naught equals zero, so the initial y position is zero. The velocity in the y direction would be, as I mentioned, the other side of, of that triangle, this opposite side, v naught y. And that would include um, the, that is, I guess, the sine component of that triangle, right? So sine theta would be equal to the opposite side, which is v naught y, divided by the hypotenuse, which is v naught, which, if rearranged, could be written as v naught, v naught, sine theta. And lastly, the acceleration in the y direction, we do know that the object does experience an acceleration in the y direction, and that acceleration is equal to, maybe if we let g be the magnitude of the acceleration, 
then the acceleration would be equal to minus g since in my coordinate system g points in the negative direction. So here g is a positive number 9.8 meters per second squared so I should attach the minus sign in front. <clears throat> And now what I'd like to do, uh, now that we know a little bit about what's happening at time t equals zero, is I would like to pick some arbitrary point later in time. Maybe uh, the object is here at a time t equals t. So some arbitrary time uh, before the object has hit the ground. At a time t equals t, what can I say about the position, velocity, and acceleration at, at that arbitrary time? So this is at a time t equals t. Well, I know that the position is no longer going to be zero. The position could be any position in the x direction. And so what I need to do is I need to refer back to the kinematic equations that I know in order to understand where the object might be uh, left and right. And so I'll start by writing a couple of the kinematic equations. I'll write that the final position x is equal to x naught plus v naught x t plus one half a x t squared. And so what I know about the x direction is that the acceleration is equal to zero, which means that when I'm finding the final position, this value here, um, and I'm writing an equation for the x direction where the acceleration is zero, this last term should be zero which means that if my object is also starting off with an initial position of zero, x naught equals zero, then this term will go away. And the final position in x is given simply by v naught x t, right, this, this middle term here. And so v naught x, we found previously, is equal to v naught cosine theta. multiplied by t. The velocity in the horizontal direction, so vx, this would be the final velocity at a time t, that velocity, if you remember, there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. And if there's no acceleration, then by definition the velocity can't change. And so if the velocity is not changing, then the final velocity, the velocity at a time t, would just be equal to the initial velocity. And this is a very important concept related to horizontal uh, motion when we're considering the motion of a projectile. And that is the velocity in the horizontal direction remains constant. There's nothing to change it and so it remains constant. So long as we're ignoring air resistance. And once again that's due to the fact that the acceleration in the x direction at this moment in time we're considering to be zero. That's the only way that that velocity can remain constant. And now in the vertical direction. So once again considering uh, the time uh, t equals t, some arbitrary time later t equals t. I know that um, in the y direction I could write a similar equation where I write y equals y naught plus v naught y t plus one half a y t squared. And of course typically we've written this as y equals y naught plus v naught y t minus one half g t squared because the acceleration a y is not some uh, random acceleration, it's an acceleration we know, it has a magnitude of 9.8 meters per second squared or lowercase letter g and that it points downward so I've already included that minus sign. And the motion in the y direction is a little bit more complicated. There is an acceleration that's present and so uh, while the initial y position does cancel since the object started out at the origin, the rest of the equation uh, stays put. And so my equation for the y position, the final position at a time t equals t, would be v naught sine theta for the vertical component times t minus one half g t squared. The velocity in the y direction can be found using the equation vy equals v naught y minus gt, where the initial velocity was equal to v naught sine theta, 
and so the velocity changes by a certain amount as a function of time as the object goes through the air right so v vy the the final velocity in the y direction would be equal to that initial velocity v naught sine theta minus gt and so eventually uh, well we, maybe i should say at the very beginning when t is equal to 0 this part of the equation would be equal to 0 and the the velocity in the vertical direction is positive. As t increases, there is a moment in time where v naught sine theta is equal to gt, and at that moment in time the, the velocity in the, in the vertical direction will be equal to zero, and any time after that the velocity will become negative. So we have the case where an object is initially launched upwards, eventually stops in the vertical direction and then comes back downward. So the velocity becomes negative as soon as the product of g times t becomes larger than v naught sine theta. And all of that happens as uh, t increases. And lastly, we know that at this arbitrary time, t equals t, the acceleration in the y direction is still equal to minus g. And so this tells us a little bit of a, a better story about what's happening in the horizontal and vertical directions as uh, we begin to consider these two directions to understand projectile motion. The next thing I'd like to think about is what does the shape of this uh, projectile's path look like? What does the trajectory of, of, of a projectile look like? Is there an identifiable shape to it? And in order to define that, that shape, really what I need is the y position as a function of the x position. Because if you think about what I've been plotting there, it really is a spatial plot of what the projectile is doing. y is a function of x. It's like a, it's a two-dimensional two uh, plot of where the projectile is. And so if I knew how y depended on x, either in the graph or in an equation form, then I could tell you what the shape of that path looked like. In order to determine that equation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the, the kinematic equation y equals v naught sine t, v naught sine theta t minus one half gt squared. And I would like to substitute in this expression here for the horizontal motion. I know that the final position x at some time t is given by v naught cosine theta t. And so what I would like to do with this expression is I would like to solve it for t which would just simply be t equals x divided by v naught cosine theta. And I would like to substitute that, that expression in for t in order to eliminate this time variable. And so what does that look like? I would get y equals v naught sine theta is still there, but instead of t I would first get x divided by v naught cosine theta minus one half g t squared, where Again, t is x divided by v naught cosine theta. Although this equation looks quite messy, there's really only another step that we need to do in order to really see uh, the purpose of these substitutions that I've made. And so what I'd like to write is y equals, and in the first term, we will see that v naught cancels with v naught and I have sine theta divided by cosine theta which is equal to tangent so tan theta and of course there's still x in the second term I have the one-half still I have g in the numerator and I have a v naught and a cosine theta in the denominator which is also squared so I will have v naught squared cosine squared theta and the x in the numerator should be squared. And now maybe you can see the point of why we've made these substitutions. If you take a look at the equation, everything that I'm circling in blue is a constant. 
tan theta and one half uh, g divided by v naught squared divided by cosine squared theta. Everything in those blue circles is constant. For a projectile launched at a given angle with a given initial speed, those two terms, uh, the leading uh, parts of those two terms would be constant. And so we could write this equation as y equals some constant c1 times x minus some constant c2 times x squared. And hopefully, you can notice that the equation that we've just found is the equation of a parabola, right? Uh, the y position as a function of x goes as some constant times x minus some constant times x squared. And so, although the angles and initial velocities and the hang times of any one projectile might be different, all of the projectiles that we look at, so long as they're uh, being affected by this vertical acceleration g, are going to have uh, a trajectory that, that follows the shape of a parabola. And that parabola might look something like this, where uh, it can be characterized by some maximum height and some maximum vertical displacement a horizontal displacement that we might call the range. And so these quantities, things like delta y, delta x, are things that uh, we can start to think about a little bit more in the example that I'd like to work out next. Here I'd like to consider a ball that's launched at an angle above the horizontal, and it has an initial speed v naught just like before. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to think about how to find equations for the maximum height, the time to reach the maximum height, the time of flight, which would be the total amount of time the object spends in the air, and the range of the projectile. And so we're going to use the kinematic equations to go ahead and try to find some expressions for these uh, things, which are things that you'll typically need to look for in a problem. And so we will start with A, which was the maximum height h. And the maximum height h in this picture is right here. So this object is being launched from the ground and going to land on the ground. And so the parabola that describes its trajectory is symmetric. And so the maximum height is going to occur right in the middle. And the problem is calling that capital letter H. And so I would like to have an expression for capital letter H. One thing that I know to be true at the maximum height, which is the variable being asked of me, is that at the maximum height, the velocity in the vertical direction is equal to zero. And I know that because right before it got to the maximum height, the object was traveling up. And right afterwards, it's traveling down. And so here, the velocity in the y direction must have been positive, and here the velocity in the y direction must have been negative. And so at some point in between, at the maximum height, the velocity in the y direction only must have been zero. And so that is a valuable piece of information that I can use to solve for the maximum height. The way that I'm going to do that is I'll use the kinematic equation vy squared equals v naught y squared minus 2g delta y. And in this instance, I know that the final velocity is going to be zero. I know that the initial velocity is the y component of this triangle. And I know that the y component is the, the, the side of the triangle that is opposite the angle, which is the sine component. And so that component is going to be v naught sine theta. So v naught sine theta is the initial velocity in the y direction squared minus 2g delta y. And what would be the vertical displacement between the initial position and this final position at the maximum height? The displacement would be h, capital letter H. And so this can be rewritten as 2g capital letter H equals v naught squared 
sine squared theta. And so I could simply divide by 2g on both sides to get an equation for capital letter H, the maximum height. And so if I knew what the angle was, and if I knew what the initial velocity was, I could tell you what the maximum height of that projectile would be by using this equation. This also tells me about relationships between the maximum height and the initial velocity, or relationships between the maximum height and the initial launch angle. So that was part A. The next part that I would like to do is part B, which asks, about the time to reach that maximum height. And I'm calling that lowercase letter t. So lowercase letter t represents the amount of time it would take for the object to just reach this maximum height. So essentially half of that parabola, how much time would that take? The question I'm asking here is similar to part a, but instead of thinking about the position when the velocity is equal to zero, I'm gonna think about the time when the velocity equals zero. And so once again, I know that the velocity in the y direction, when it reaches that maximum height, is going to be equal to zero. And now I'm thinking about the time. And so the simplest way to achieve that time, I think, is by using the kinematic equation vy equals v naught y minus gt. I know the final velocity is zero, the initial velocity is v naught y, which is v naught sine theta minus gt. And so g times t equals v naught sine theta, or the amount of time it takes to reach that maximum height is v naught sine theta divided by g. And so importantly, I'd like to reiterate I know that the t in this equation is specifically the amount of time it takes to reach its maximum height because I plugged the final velocity in as being zero. The final velocity is only zero at that maximum height, and so for that reason, I know that the t corresponds to the t that I was looking for. Also, I keep saying at the top of the projectile's path, the velocity is zero. But really, what I should be saying is that the velocity in the vertical direction is zero. The projectile keeps moving to the right, which is why the, the thing is able to uh, keep moving and doesn't just stop and, and hang up there in the air. So really the velocity, the total velocity is not zero because there's still a horizontal velocity, but it's the vertical velocity that is zero. Next, I will do part C, which is the time of flight, the total time of flight, capital letter T. And so that would be the amount of time it takes for the projectile to start where it's launched from, go all the way up to that maximum height, and then come all the way back down. So that would be capital letter T. And one quick way to solve for capital letter T would be to just say that the total time of flight T would just be equal to two times the amount of time it took for it to get all the way up there. And so we could just say that the total time of flight would be equal to two v naught sine theta divided by g. Again, here the path of the projectile was symmetric because it was being launched from and landing on the ground, and so I can just double the amount of time it took for it to go to its maximum height to achieve that, that total time of flight. Another way to uh, determine the time of flight, and this is important for problem solving reasons, is to say something clever, and that, and that something clever is that from this initial position here at the origin of the graph that I've drawn to its final position where it lands back on the ground, the vertical displacement delta y is equal to zero. If the object is launched from and lands on the ground, then from the initial to final positions, the vertical displacement is zero. And if that is the case, then I know that delta y is equal to zero. But we also know that delta y is equal to v naught y t minus one half gt squared. 
and v naught y once again is v naught sine theta times t minus one half g t squared. So if this is equal to zero, if this is equal to zero, this expression here, then that means one half g t squared is equal to v naught sine theta t. And there are two values of t that satisfy this equation. Uh, because there are two values of t that satisfy the y position being zero. And one of those times is zero, and the other time is the time when it hits the ground on the other side. So when t equals zero, before the thing has even been launched, the thing is at the ground, and the equation works. And when the object is launched and then strikes the ground again, uh, again we have a time that satisfies the equation. And that's the, that's the time that we're more interested in, the time of flight. And so if I divide both sides by t, and then rearrange and solve for t, what we get for the time of flight would be equal to the same thing as what we got above, 2 v naught sine theta divided by g. And so hopefully this shows that there's a couple of different methods that you can use to find the hang time of a projectile. Um, if the path is symmetric, you can just use the above method. But even if it's not, maybe you can use uh, the bottom method, which I suppose also sort of assumes that the, the path is uh, s you know, starting and ending in the same vertical positions, but slightly different method. Lastly, what I'd like to do is determine the range of the projectile, which I've called R. And the way that I'm, gonna d I'm going to determine the range of the projectile is I'll write an equation for x. The, the range of the projectile is a quantity that is inherently related to how far it goes in the x direction. And so your problem solving skills should be telling you that you should start with an equation that is in the x direction. And I know that any displacement in x, delta x, is equal to v naught x times t. The equation is not so complicated because there's no acceleration in the x direction for a projectile. And so ignoring the air resistance, I can start with delta x equals v naught x times t. And I'll make two substitutions. The first substitution is for v naught x. We know that from my diagram, v naught x is this component of this triangle, and that component of the triangle is equal to v naught times cosine of theta. And so in my equation, I'll write v naught cosine theta times t. And t, which is the amount of time it takes for it to travel the full range, right? t is the amount of time it takes to travel this entire range that I'm going to be calculating, that would be the hang time. And so the, the expression that I should be plugging in for t here is the equation for the hang time, which is 2 v naught sine theta divided by g. And so if I plug in the expression for the hang time in for t, then the delta x that I will be finding is the range r. And so if I massage the equation a little bit, if I rearrange the variables just a little bit, I have a v naught times a v naught, which is v naught squared, and I have a g in the, de the denominator. Everything else is 2 times sine theta times cosine theta. And I would not hold it against you if you did not remember that the uh, expression 2 times sine theta times cosine theta is related through a trigonometric function as sine 2 theta, sine of twice the angle. And so the range could be calculated as v naught squared divided by g times sine of twice the angle. And so given only the angle and the initial velocity, you can determine how far in the x direction that the projectile will travel through this equation here. And one interesting note that I would like to make here before we end, 
about this range equation is that the range can take on different values for different values of theta and v naught. But where does our max occur? Where does the maximum range occur for this projectile? So our max is the maximum range of the projectile. Our max occurs at the place where sine or the angle where sine of 2 theta is equal to 1. And I know this because sine and cosine oscillate back and forth between 1, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, and negative 1. And so a sine can never take on a value larger than 1. And so if I want to find the largest value of r, I would need sine of 2 theta to be equal to its largest value, which is equal to 1. And so this will occur at the place where sine of 2 theta is equal to 1, which occurs where 2 theta is equal to 90 degrees, right? Sine theta has a maximum value at 90 degrees, and so sine of 2 theta would be equal to 1 if 2 theta is equal to 90 degrees. And so if 2 theta is equal to 90 degrees, the maximum value of R occurs at theta equals 45 degrees. And so what, what this is showing us is that if you want a projectile to go as far as possible, you should launch it at 45 degrees. Now, in this derivation, we've assumed that there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. And so that's made our uh, you know, equations a little bit more simplified. But in the case that we're ignoring air resistance, we launch a projectile at 45 degrees, and it will go as far as possible. And if you launched it at 47 degrees or 43 degrees, a little bit above or a little bit below that, then the projectile would not quite go that, that far because the sine term of this equation would be a little bit less than one.